dressed in the Savior's blood, died he for me, who caused his pain, for me, who him to death pursue. Amazing love, how can it be? God should die for me. Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, should die for me? He left his father's throne above, so free, so
casting down their golden crown around the glassy sea. Cherubim and seraphim falling down. See all the glory and 
Good morning, church. Welcome to Koinonia. Welcome to our online service. If this is your first time here, we want to welcome you. You are free to fill in our online connect card so that we can connect with you and you can know a little bit more about the church. Today, before we begin our worship service, I have two very important announcements to give to you. The first is about our Reaching Out campaign that we have launched in the month of May. Recall what we're doing, right? In the month of May, all the general offering that we receive that normally goes to support the church, what we are doing is we're gonna give them out away. We're gonna give them out away to nonprofit organizations uh, in this community and also in around the world and, and to support them. And this is our way of saying, we're gonna practice God's generosity. We're gonna extend our hand and we're gonna help out the other people um, that's in need around the world in a very, very practical way as a church. And so now I have uh, not the latest, latest figure, and I have a preliminary figure that we have collected in the month of May. As of, as of May 30th, we have almost $132,000, almost $132,000. And um, so we do technically have one more day that we need to calculate, which is May 31st. But regardless of the actual total, uh, we're, we're so encouraged. The pastoral team is so encouraged by the generosity and the giving of the church. And we wanna thank you on behalf of these people and on behalf of these organizations for your giving and for your support. And we obviously we wanna give thanks to God because He is the first one. He is the one that gave us first and then we respond in giving. And so our encouragement to you today is continue to be generous, continue to give, continue to support these organizations, and continue to be the light in the world in a very, very practical way. The second important announcement that I have to give to you has to do with our reopening planning as a church, reopening our in-person worship as a church. As you know, the provincial government has released the stages and plans for reopening for the coming few months. And the church at this moment is also planning and preparing for opening our in-person gathering. And so we're going to be hosting a special worship service next week to share with you the vision and the planning for the coming few months. And this is going to be very important for our church family. And so we strongly encourage you to continue attending. And if you know friends and family members that plan to attend this church or have been attending this church, but have not been tuning into our online service, make sure you get them to come. Make sure you encourage them to come so that they can also hear the plan and the message that God has for us. And so as we begin our worship service today, I'm going to invite you to stand and we're going to pray together first. Holy Spirit, we're going to invite you to come. We're going to invite you to come. This is a service that we have set aside specifically to learn about you and to learn about how to relate to you. So Holy Spirit, we ask you to come. We ask you to come into our lives and we come into our homes and come into wherever we are gathering at this moment. And Holy Spirit, may you make your presence known to us today. And for the people who need comfort, for the people in our congregation that need comfort, Holy Spirit, would you comfort them because you are the comforter. For the people in our congregation that needs guidance and that needs counsel, Holy Spirit, would you guide them because you are the counselor. Holy Spirit, for those people that need help, would you help them? Would you provide strength to them because you are the helper? And all of us, we need your power, Holy Spirit. Would you bless us with your power? And more importantly, we need to hear God's truth. We need to hear his word. So Holy Spirit, would you continue to reveal to us what God is telling us today? And we set, it out, set aside this time for you May we encounter you today. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.
The king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from. Oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life. Oh, he is my song. You are. Do 
pour it out. Let your love run over here and now. Let your glory fill this house. Now the world awaits your presence. And this power. desire is for you to fill us because if you're not in us then we're not enough if you're not in us then we're not enough and the truth of the matter is so many times the world will tell us that that we're not enough on our own and or even that we ourselves tell us that we're not enough and surely there's this yearning inside of us, always looking for more, always looking for better. Something or someone to fill us because we're not enough. But God, the promise and the good news that you have for us is that you gave us the Holy Spirit. And if the Holy Spirit fills in us, your, your teaching is that it will be like a spring that never, never runs dry. There will be living water just pouring out, gushing out of this well. And that is enough. The Holy Spirit in us, that's enough. So God, I want to pray for the church. I don't know where everybody is at this moment. Maybe for some of us, we are feeling that we're not enough. God, with your Holy Spirit in your mercy and in your power, would your Holy Spirit dwell with them? Would your Spirit make its presence, make his presence known inside 
their lives. And God, would you speak to us? Would you fill us? Would your spirit guide us into all truth as he always does? Would your spirit point us to Jesus Christ as he always does? And may the Holy Spirit continue to fill us as he always desires to do so. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, you may be seated. Let me ask you all a question. Do you prefer to work alone? Or do you prefer to partner with someone or to work in a group? For me, I definitely prefer to work alone. For me, having a partner is really annoying. For me, it is just easier to do things on your own. Let's say you're working on a school project together. I mean, there's so much more work and trouble to work with a partner. You have to find time and a place to meet, and hopefully your partner's ideas will align with your own ideas. But if, the thing is, even if your ideas align with each other, there are just so many other areas where there could be conflicts. Now, you may be keen to try your best to get the best marks possible, but of course, you might get stuck with a partner that is a slacker, someone like me. When I was in university, I enjoyed playing tennis, believe it or not. And sometimes we would play double with a partner. But the thing is, no one really wants to play double with me because I was lazy. I was one of the worst tennis partners that you can ever have. Maybe because of that, my tennis partner usually ended up being our church pastor at the time. He is probably the only one who is loving and patient enough to tolerate my laziness. Now, even though he's a, he was a super, super nice guy, he still found me to be very, very annoying. You see, he may be very loving and patient. Boy, but he is very competitive, and he wants to win all the time. But for me, having fun is more important than running down the ball. So he would often yell at me for not trying hard enough because our objective of the game is totally different. Now, maybe you have the same experience. You have a lazy partner, you know he is capable, but he's just not willing, okay? You give him all the tools, all the things that he needs, you taught him exactly what to do, and he's just not doing it. And the whole experience has been very frustrating for you. But you know what? Good partnership can also be very rewarding and have a very, very positive outcome. Let me tell you a story. When I was in grade eight, and these are just a few years ago in Hong Kong, we were asked to do a group project in the English class. Now, you see, we were all learning English as a second language at the time, and our teacher thought that it would be fun and good for us to do a project, a radio play project. That's right. There's going to be no video, just audio only. So at that time, I partnered with several of my best friends to work on this radio play. And we have a common goal. We want to mix the best radio play in the whole class. And we decided that we are going to do a James Bond radio play. And of course, I wanted to play James Bond. But the problem is, I wasn't handsome enough. But I was beautiful enough, so I ended up being one of the Bond girls, believe it or not. Because there were no girls at the time among our group. So we collaborated together, we wrote the scripts together, we copied ideas from different James Bond movies, and we looked for sound effects of explosion, gunfights, car chases, you name it. And we rehearsed takes after takes, and we finally get everything recorded and edited into a masterpiece. And that was a lot of work because we were using analog equipments at the time, cassette audio recorders. You might not even know what that is. But anyway, we have so much fun together. We have great chemistry together. 
Um, some of us were great in technology, some of us were, were great voice actors, uh, some were very good in writing up scripts. Although we didn't quite win the Oscar for Best Pictures, we certainly make a mark in our class as our teacher and classmate were just amazed with all the sound effects and the stories that we created. It was so much fun. And the experience of having a great partnership still sticks in my mind as one of the highlights in my growing up years. The relationship and the experience in working together, in collaborating, in partnering with a great group of people and friends was so amazing and that it was beyond words that I can describe. And it was just awesome. Now, I don't know what your views on partnership is like. Maybe you also prefer to work alone. Maybe you have a bad experience in the past working on a project together and get burned because you ended up doing all the work. But think about this for a moment. Wouldn't be, it be wonderful and awesome to experience a great partnership in life? Someone to bounce off ideas and to help you, someone you can, you can count on all the time, someone who is very wise, someone who is powerful, someone who always knows what is the best thing to do at the right time. Wouldn't that be wonderful? What if I tell you that if you're a Christian, such partnership is readily available to you, and all you have to do is say yes and you can access the power and gifts that are beyond what you can ever imagine. Wouldn't that be a partnership that would be worthwhile to pursue? This morning, we are finishing up our series on hosting the spirits. In the last two weeks, we have been looking at the Holy Spirit, who He is, and how we can experience more of Him in our daily lives. In the first sermon, Pastor Carson told us that our body is a temple that holds the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit actually lives in us. And the Holy Spirit who lives in us has a purpose. Wayne Grudem, a theologian and the general editor of the ESV Study Bible, tells us that the purpose of the Holy Spirit is to manifest the active presence of God in the world, and especially in the church. And how does the Holy Spirit does that? As we learn in the second sermon from Pastor Craig, the Holy Spirit is just as powerful as God the Father and Jesus the Son. And He certainly does not need our help. The Holy Spirit can achieve a lot of things on His own, but yet the Holy Spirit wants to include us, you and me, in the great plan of God's salvation. Now, the Holy Spirit gives each one of us spiritual gifts so we can strengthen our believers and the, and the church. And today, we are going to look into one of the very important aspects of experiencing and developing a deeper relationship with the Holy Spirit through our service and how we can cultivate this relationship by working closely with the Holy Spirit, by using the gifts that the Holy Spirit has given us. The Apostle Paul, in a letter to the Corinthians, wrote about this extensively. So now let's turn to the New Testament and look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be uninformed. What Paul is saying is, Hey guys, I want you to understand about spiritual gifts, okay? I know there are many misunderstandings among you. But let me tell you something important this morning. To each one of you is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. And according to Paul, what are these manifestations or spiritual gifts that are given to us through the Holy Spirit? Paul continues to tell us in the next verse. For to one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing 
by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the ability to distinguish between spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. Paul continues, All these are empowered by one and the same Spirit, who apportions to each one individually as he wills. So Paul is telling us is that all these spiritual gifts are empowered to us by the Holy Spirit. He decides who gets what and when, and even more importantly, whatever gift God has given us through the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, it is all for the common benefit, for the common good of the church, not just for each individual Christian. It is not for you or me to be proud of or for you to show it off. Hey, look at me. I can do all these wonderful things. Yeah, you may be wise. You may be knowledgeable. Or maybe you can heal and do miracles. But a spiritual gift is given to each one of us so that we can help and build up the church. So, we, so that we can help to build each other up. Just like a superhero with superpower, if you don't use it for the common good, this superpower is not so super after all. And this is a very important idea that Paul would develop further in chapter 14 in 1 Corinthians on the specific example of speaking in tongues and prophecies. Paul says, Pursue love and earnestly desire the spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. For one who speaks in tongues speaks not to men, but to God. For no one understands him, but he utters mysteries in the Spirit. Paul continues, On the other hand, the one who prophesies speaks to people for their upbuilding and encouragement and consolation. The one who speaks in tongues builds up himself, but the one who prophesies builds up the church. Now, I want you all to speak in tongues, but even more to prophesy. The one who prophesies is greater than the one who speaks in tongues, unless someone interprets, so that the church may be built up. So here, Paul is telling us is that all Christians, all Christians should really desire spiritual gifts. And he much prefer that the believers at the time to prophesize than to speak in tongues. So here, tongues refer to the gift of speech, in which the speaker may not even able to articulate what is being said. So what it is, is essentially a way to show a sense of love and adoration and praise for God. And it is great, don't get me wrong, it is awesome, but in itself is also a problem because only God will understand the person with the gift of tongues because no one else can understand it if there is no one there to interpret. So you see, when you speak in tongues, you are the only one that is being built up and therefore no one else can benefit from it. However, when you use your gift to prophesy and to proclaim God's truth, you are building up the church because you are helping others to understand the truth about God. So those who hear it can grow and be strong in their faith. And Paul further encouraged the Christian at that time and to us today in verse 12. So with yourselves, since you are eager for manifestation of the Spirit, strive to excel in building up the church. Paul tried to emphasize the same point again. Use your gift and strive to excel in building up the church. This is the main purpose of the spiritual gifts. So from Paul's teaching, we now know that spiritual gifts are given to us by the Holy Spirit to build up the church. But what are we going to do with these spiritual gifts are still up to us 
and there are significant consequences with our actions. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus told us a parable about what the kingdom of God is like. In that parable, Jesus teaches us what we ought to do with the spiritual gifts that are entrusted to us. And let's see what we can learn from that parable. This is what Jesus said in a parable of the talents. In Matthew chapter 25, Jesus said, the kingdom of God will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants up and entrusted to them his property. To one, he gave five talents. To another, two. To another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. So there are three servants. One got five talents, one got two talents, and one got one talent. Now, the word talents here refers to a unit of exchange of money. And it is actually quite a large amount. It was estimated that one talent is about 20, is about 20 years of wages for a worker. So in today's dollars, let's say if you earn $30,000 a year, so one talent is almost $600,000 in today's dollars. Now, I'm not sure what you are going to do with your $600,000, but Jesus told us what the first two servants have done. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. So also, also he who had the two talents made two talents more. So the first two servants went at once. There is a sense of urgency. They know this is important. They acted responsibly and invested perhaps in a business and doubled their money, both of them. And what about the one who received the one talent? The text tells us this. But he who had received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. Now, back in the days, there's no safe and there's no safety deposit box at the bank. So it was fairly common practice to bury something valuable in the ground. Pretty smart guy, right? This way, at least he won't lose the $600,000 principle that he has. But he has no idea what is going to happen when the master returns. Now, after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here, I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And next in the story, the servant with the two talents came forward, and he also who had the two talents came forward, saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here, I have made two talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. So we can see the first and second servants invested their talents and doubled their money. They acted according to their potential. They had been faithful to do what the master expected of them. And they received the same praise from the master. They were commended for being good and faithful. And the master entrusted them with even more and invites them to enter his joy. Now, at this point, you might be curious to find out what happened to the servant who played it safe. It shouldn't be too bad, right? I mean, he might not have earned any profits, but at least 
the guy did not lose any of the principal, right? Now, let's take a look. He, who is the one, the servant with the one talent, who had received, came forward saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid and I went and hit your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. So remember, this servant wanted to play safe. He was afraid to invest and lose the master's money because he knew that his master was a hard man. So he just buried it in the ground and he didn't even try to take some risk. I mean, he could have at least maybe taken a percentage of it, maybe 50%, 30%. How about 20% to invest and then perhaps maybe keep the rest in the ground. But no, the problem that Jesus was trying to teach us is that this servant did nothing. He did nothing that was left to be entrusted to him, and he left all that to waste. And his master was furious. So his master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and at my coming I should have relieved what was my own with interest. You wicked servant, you could at least, you know, put my money into the bank, maybe invest in some money market funds or some GIC and earn me some interest, man. Are you kidding me? Burying my money in the ground? Really? You know, there are going to be consequences. So the master takes the talent from him and give it to him who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has will more be given, and he who will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away and cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness. In that place, there will be weeping and gashing of teeth. What Jesus is telling us through this parable is that as Christians and followers of Jesus, we are all given different gifts and talents according to the will of the Holy Spirit. The key question that is going to make the world of difference is this. What are you doing with your gifts? Are you going to be like the servant with the five or two talents who acted responsibly and go out there and use your gift to benefit the church? Or are you going to be like the servant with the one talent who has the gift but decided not to do anything with it? As Christians and citizens of God's kingdom, we are called to be faithful with all God has given to us. We are called to use our gifts that we receive from the Holy Spirit to glorify God, to serve and to further His kingdom. As Christians, we have already been entrusted with our gifts and our talents, but we still have to act on it. Remember, the Holy Spirit is just as powerful as God the Father, and He certainly does not need our need at all, but He still wants to partner with us because the Holy Spirit wants us to develop a close relationship with Him. And the only thing that we need to respond is to say yes to work alongside with the Holy Spirit. So how do we start this wonderful process of using our gifts to serve along with the Holy Spirit? Let me give you three U's. Unwrap, utilize, and upgrade. Let's talk about the first one. Unwrap. Unwrap the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Find out what your gifts are. Just like a present, you need to open up all the nice wrappings and ribbons to find out what is inside. Sometimes 
It might take a little bit of time and work to find out. Talk to people that know you well. Your parents, your siblings, your small group leaders, your best friends. You may be surprised what they will say. Your gifts may be very different than what you think. Now, don't just brush them off as being irrelevant or impossible. Pray about them and see how the Holy Spirit will lead you. And of course, once you find out what your gifts are, don't just hide them in the ground like the servant with the one talent. Put it to use. So the second U is utilize. Utilize your spiritual gifts to build up the church. Find a ministry team to join and to build each other up. Join Kapos, the children ministry. Maybe consider joining the youth ministry. Talk to Pastor Ava and Pastor Carson to see how you can use your gifts. And sometimes you don't even have to utilize your gifts in an official church setting. Maybe you have a gift in listening to people. Perhaps you can lend an ear to hear someone out because a lot of times, you know what, you're the only one who really understands what they are going through as their peers. And there are many ways where you can serve with your gifts. And you can ask the Holy Spirit to give you more opportunities where you can serve. Now, the third you is upgrade. Just like a lot of things in life, you can keep developing and improving your spiritual gifts. Paul encourages his young friend and apprentice Timothy like this in a letter to Timothy. Do not neglect the gift you have, which was given you by prophecy when the council of elders laid their hands on you. Practice these things. Practice these things. Immerse yourself in them so that all may see your progress. Progress and continued development of your spiritual gifts is important. Pray and ask God to help you to develop it and be better with it. Find out ways where you can continue to learn. Ask people that you trust for feedback. There's always room to grow. This way, we will all be serving with a more humble heart and be more grounded. Now, after these three use, unwrap, utilize, and upgrade, there's actually a fourth you, and that is you. What about you? The Holy Spirit is knocking on the door of your heart this morning. And what are you going to do? Oh, you may say, who, me? No, I'm too young. I'm too ex inexperienced. Besides, I do not have any gift. And you know what? To think that you have no gift is a direct contradiction of who God the Holy Spirit is. But you know what? If I can do it, you can do it. Believe it or not, I'm the introvert of the introvert. It may not look like it, but I was really shy and quiet. When I was in school, I even at university, I was so quiet. I don't like even to answer questions, even though I know I will get marks for it. But several years ago, I was given the opportunity to serve in preaching. And for me, speaking in front of an audience and speaking up like this, um, it's just so scary and so nerve-wracking. I'm an introvert with a terrible, terrible stage fright. I don't want to be out there. I don't, I don't want to be in front of an audience. And I certainly do not want to be in front of a camera. But I was given an opportunity, and with a trembling and trusting heart, I say yes and take a step forward. So I started preaching and giving messages to the youth worship. And gradually, I started to serve in the English worship as a speaker. Now, I've, I've never attended any formal training in seminary, but I keep a humble heart. I keep learning and listen to different sermons from different speakers. I bought Bible commentaries and softwares to help me when researching different topics. And the pastoral team has been amazing and awesome in guiding me along 
through the whole process. I keep utilizing and upgrading my gifts. But you know what? One of the most amazing help that I've been getting came from none other than the Holy Spirit himself. You know, there are so many times when I, that I struggle while I was preparing for the sermon. I have no idea what to say and how to say it. And then, strangely enough, there would be moments where ideas and words would just come into my mind and just flow out of me uncontrollably. And I just cannot help but sit in front of a keyboard and take them down. And this is how I've been trying to learn to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit's voice. And there are moments when I was about to fall asleep in bed, but then all of a sudden, a great idea came into my mind, and I knew that I would have to write them down. So I would get up from bed in total darkness, go to my study, and start writing these things down. And on, and on, on more than one occasion, I went back and we read some of, the, some of my sermon scripts, and I said to myself, there's no way that I could possibly write that because I know it has to be the Holy Spirit who was guiding me throughout the whole process. And through my serving, I have received and experienced so much grace from God. I mean, how is it possible that the Holy Spirit would use an introvert who does not like to speak to be a partner together? So you, you can do it too. I know you may think that you are nobody in the kingdom of God. You may be scared and fearful, but you have to believe that when God calls you, He will equip you. The Holy Spirit will give you whatever you need at that moment. Just wait on Him and He always come through because He sees you as a valuable partner in the kingdom of God. The actual work will be done by God's Spirit through you and you will be doing things beyond your wildest imagination. If you are a Christian, you have the power of the Holy Spirit working through you. When God calls you to serve Him, you will find assurance in knowing that you do not rely on your own strength and ability. You can totally rely on the Holy Spirit to enable you to help you. So, do you see yourself as a valued partner of the Holy Spirit? Remember, God does not need us, but He has chosen to partner with us and to use us to bring the kingdom on this earth. So I encourage you to consider what God has entrusted and placed in you. Consider what He is asking you to do. Pray about it. Act on it. We are not just spectators in the kingdom of God. We are all called to run the race. You may think that you are not capable or you're not able to, and you may be absolutely right, but the Holy Spirit will give you whatever you need, whenever you need it, and all you need is to trust God and the Holy Spirit because He has certainty and trust you with something that you may not even know you are capable of yet. The Holy Spirit has done amazing things in so many people's lives through generations and generations of Christians who are willing to follow His guidance. Are you willing to be part of this journey? Are you ready and willing to tap into the gifts that has already been entrusted to you even though you need to take risks, even though you would need to get out of your comfort zone? This morning, church, this is the charge of the Holy Spirit to you. Whatever your gift may be, serve and use it to build up the church and to glorify God. So go out. Whether you have five talents, you have two talents, or even one talent, it doesn't matter. Just go out and use your talents and gifts. Partner with the Holy Spirit and invest in the kingdom of God. And one day, when Jesus comes back, He will say this to you. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. 
I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. Let's pray. O oh, Heavenly Father, thank you for speaking to us through the teaching of your servants on the Holy Spirit these last three weeks. What a great gift and blessing to have your Holy Spirit living inside each one of us. I ask that you help us to clean up our inner beings so that we may be able to experience the presence of the Holy Spirit deeply in our daily lives. I ask that you help us to reveal to us what spiritual gifts that we have and to help us to discern ways on how we can use our gifts to bless those around us and to build up the body of Christ and that your great name will be glorified. We pray all in Jesus' name. Amen.
26, 33. It says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be added to you. Come, church. Come, brothers and sisters. Let us hold on to that promise. Let us not hold back in fear or worry, but serve with courage and boldness. Let us offer ourselves to serve God and his kingdom. And the promise is that it's not by our power, but by God's power and his strength that change can be seen. By his power, lives will be transformed. And so I pray, I pray that the Holy Spirit come, invade us, strengthen us, equip us, because we are your church. We carry your hope. We pray for your help in us to serve you and your kingdom. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Church, let me now bless you with the word of God. Today's benediction and sending is going to come from Jesus himself. This is a charge and a mission that he's given to his disciples and also to the church, to us. And this is what he says. He says this. He says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. And so church, as we wrap up the worship service, we're going to encourage you to continue your worship through offering. And you can do so by scanning our QR code. You can do so by mailing us a check. Uh, and you can also commit uh, offering regularly uh, through the PayPal platform. And remember that all of the offering that we have received in the month of May, we have given them out. So we are relying on God's providence through the church to continue our ministry and continue our operation. And may we continue to be faithful in our worship and our giving. Church, we'll see you next week.
was free. I rose, went forth, and followed thee. My chains fell off, my heart was free. I rose, went forth, and followed thee. No condemnation now I dread. Jesus and I.
Your love towards us. 